So here's me, and I'm going hiking. I'm having a good old time, and I see this really cool plant, and I have to take a picture of it. In black and white, of course. The plant doesn't look like that, though. It looks a little more like this. I'm thinking, wow, what a cool picture. So I decide to share it with my friend, who tells me, Matt, you should totally put this on the internet. I tell her, someone could totally steal this image from me and claim it as their own. No worries, she says. I have this top secret algorithm to help you out. The concern that I expressed to my friend Cece is quite realistic today. We're constantly sharing images on the internet, and it is important for us to claim ownership of our content. So I open the top secret algorithm and discover two concepts, visual cryptography and sampling distribution of the means. Visual cryptography is a scheme to hide a secret image using any number of shadow images called shares. So I choose this smiley face image to be my secret image because I am so happy about the picture that I took while hiking. My secret image is a binary image, meaning it only contains either black or white values, nothing in between. When I break my image up into shares, they alone don't look like anything. But when layered atop one another, the secret image is revealed. This particular algorithm generates shares using these two simple patterns. If we layer the same pattern with itself, we can see through half of this 2x2 two two region. However, if we layer opposing patterns with one another, light is blocked in this region. Now this is great because the shares can be printed on transparencies. Once the shares are aligned, the secret image is revealed in person. It is also possible to print the shares on regular printer paper, but it is more difficult to reveal the secret image this way. So the trick to this algorithm is the method in which we come up with these shares. Because I want to protect my plant picture, I simply use data from my plant picture and the concept of sampling distribution of the means. To generate the first share or master share, I begin by finding the mean or average value of my image. I then choose a pseudo-random sample from this image, which is say 50 random pixels, and then compute the mean of the sample. If the sampled mean is less than the image mean, I use this pattern, and if the sampled mean is greater than the image mean, I use this pattern. I continue with more sets of 50 random pixels until I have generated the master share. This next step is where my secret smiley face image comes into play. This image could easily be a company's logo or contain copyright information about the image. As long as it's a binary black or white image, we're good. I run through the image again, but I need to choose the same pseudo-random sets of points that I chose before. This is achieved with a numeric key that dictates the pseudo-random order. While it statistically appears random, a given key will always choose the same seemingly random pixel locations. I continue choosing sample means to compare the mean of the image and add an additional comparison with the secret image until I have generated a second share called an ownership share. The ownership share can now be combined with the master share to reveal the secret image. I give the ownership share to a trusted neutral party in the event of a dispute. If my image was stolen, I could generate a new master share from the stolen image, print it out, obtain the ownership share from the neutral party, and reveal my secret image. In order for this to work, I would also need the numeric key for the pseudo-random number generator to ensure that the same points on the suspect image were chosen to generate the new master share. If the numeric key was wrong, or the suspect image wasn't really stolen, the new master share layered on top of the ownership share would not reveal the secret image. Well, this is wonderful, I say. I'm glad I could help, Cece replies. So does this really work if someone steals my image and manipulates it? I'm glad you asked, she says. This technique is effective against many alterations. I decide to test this for myself. I alter my image in 10 different ways and generate new master shares for each alteration to see if I can still recover my smiley face watermark. I'll do this analysis using computers rather than printing new master shares for a controlled assessment. I use two metrics to assess the attacks on my original image. I first use peak signal to noise ratio, or PSNR, to assess how different the modified image is. Ideally, this number should be small and less than 30. This indicates a seriously altered image. To assess the quality of my newly generated watermark, I'll use normalized correlation, a simple percentage to see how alike two images are. I'd like this number to be really high. A normalized correlation of 100% would indicate an identical pair of images. In other words, if the smiley face is visible, the algorithm is successful. I'll first take my original image and blur it, just like this, removing the high frequency information from the image. Despite this pretty severe blur, the watermark is still recoverable. 
Though the watermark is quite noisy, the smiley face is still detectable, and I could still claim this blurry image as my own. Now, I'll go the other way and sharpen the image, which results in an increase of contrast along edges. This modification is numerically less severe than blurring, and sure enough, the watermark can still be regenerated, and the algorithm stands up to sharpening. Perhaps the image in question is a brightened version of my original image. While this is a noisier attack than blurring or sharpening, the watermark is still regenerated more clearly. This is because changing the brightness of the image shifts the mean of the image uniformly with all of the values in the image. Sure enough, with the darkened image, we can expect similar results for the same reason. Regenerating the watermark is a bit more successful with this darkened image. It is likely that brightening the image clipped some of the image content, resulting in an adverse effect on the image mean. This darkened image, however, does not appear to be as crushed as the brightened image was clipped. Now, the image is geometrically altered. When cropping the image, the cropped region was filled with the mean of the available values so that the cropped area would not skew the watermark's regeneration. Despite real values being completely absent from the modified image, again, the smiley face is still visible. Rotating the image, on the other hand, proved to be a bit of a challenge for this algorithm. The watermark regenerated from the rotated image bears no resemblance to the original watermark. However, if time is taken to register the rotated image back to its original position, the rotated image more closely resembles a cropped image and the watermark can be successfully regenerated. A lot of images shared online are severely compressed. We'll now see if the watermark can be regenerated from the image sent through JPEG compression. JPEG is a lossy compression scheme which works by removing high frequency information from an image. This image closely resembles the original, and sure enough, the watermark is easily generatable. The introduction of noise to the original image did prove to be a bit problematic for this algorithm. Since noise is typically random, it is therefore uncorrelated with the values of the image, which can have adverse effects on the mean value of the image. While the newly generated watermark does bear a slight resemblance to the original watermark, the smiley face is barely visible. For these last two tests, I'll consider some scenarios that can be physically modeled. First, I'll project the photo onto the wall and take a photograph of this projection. After manually registering this captured image to the original, the watermark could still be regenerated despite the washed out and slightly noisy values introduced by the projector and camera. Finally, I'll print my photograph using a laser printer on generic printer paper and scan it back into the computer. Despite the resolution of the printer and noise introduced by the scanner, the watermark could still be regenerated. Since I was able to generate my watermark from most of the modified versions of my image, I can feel comfortable knowing that I have some more evidence to claim this image as my own in the event of a dispute. Next time I go hiking, I'll be sure to share all the cool plants that I find. Thanks, CC. Anytime.